Hello, Stephen Wellman, Editor-in-Chief of GeekNet Media. We're here today in San Francisco at Intel Developer Forum. And today we're going to talk about a very cool topic, uh, perceptual computing. I'm here with Mr. Craig Hurst of Intel. Craig, what is perceptual computing? Yeah, so perceptual computing is really about the evolution of interacting with the PC, the human computer interface, and natural user interfaces. So how do you perceive what you are trying to uh, get accomplished on the computer um, with your face, with your voice, with gesture recognition, uh, very natural user interface is another way to describe it. Um, but it goes even further than that, and we'll see more and more technologies evolve uh, and modalities of interacting with the computer that'll make it more immersive, more fun, more exciting. You guys have a big announcement here at IDF related to perceptual computing. I believe you released a new SDK. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we did. We had um, uh, Dottie Perlmutter announced the uh, availability of the perceptual computing SDK, which will become available in about a month. Um, he also announced a developer challenge that we're going to be uh, releasing when we release the SDK for a million dollars of uh, promotion and prize money to go along with that. Uh, to get the ecosystem very excited. So the SDK is going to be available to help developers access gesture recognition, face recognition, voice recognition, and embed that in their applications. We have a lot of advanced developers here in the Go Parallel audience and on SourceForge uh, more directly. Could you tell us a little bit about what some uh, enhancements that an application developer might use, perceptual computing in this SDK in particular? How could they enhance either a new application or even an existing application? Sure. So uh, what we're seeing developers really get excited about when we describe this is taking these technologies and applying them to things like gaming, as an example. Uh, how you interact with uh, a 3D world and how you use your voice or your hands to manipulate objects in the game uh, can be very fun, uh, very entertaining. Um, uh, also, your voice for productivity applications, like you want to find something, you want to search your desktop, or you want to search the internet. Um, in addition, video conferencing or communication applications where um, with the, the use of the depth camera that uh, comes with the developer kit, you can segment the foreground and background. So you could put a different scene behind you, like a green screen technology, but without actually having a green screen. So you could be in your home office, right, but appear like you're in a boardroom or at the beach or something along those lines. So developers get really excited about mostly, I think, gesture and how they can apply gesture with uh, their fingers, right? And this is the exciting thing about what we're bringing to the market now with this new SDK is you can have 10 finger articulation being detected with this SDK. So you can use that to pick things up, very fine grain uh, detection and, and usages there. So people are getting very, very excited about that. Help our audience understand what kind of a leap forward is this 10-finger detection versus uh, any kind of existing perceptual computing models that might currently be available in the marketplace. How has this actually changed things for anyone looking to, I don't know, and use this technology? So I think what's most exciting is by just using your fingers, right, to manipulate objects, right, it's much more uh, uh, easy to use. You can sit in front of your computer to do that. Um, as opposed to being uh, much further away from it or, or not having the, uh, the ability to detect the fine grain uh, manipulation of your fingertips. Um, so it gives you the ability to virtually pick up an object or move it or point to something or recognize a, a hand motion or a hand gesture, right? Like think about sign language even being interpreted by your computer at some point. Uh, things along those lines get people very excited. All right. I believe you have a demonstration for us of this, uh, of some of these tools. I do. And uh, with that, let's take a look here at the screen behind us. Okay. Uh, so we can get a little bit more uh, detail about the tools, please. Uh, so show, I'll, show I'll interact. So on our Ultrabook here, we have, um, this is the new camera from Creative. It includes uh, an array microphone, um, a regular RGB camera, and a, uh, a depth camera as well. So all that data is collected and interpreted by our SDK. Uh, and then that can be used by uh, an application developer to Im embed those things into uh, the interaction of his application. So in this model, I can actually detect my hand. I can actually detect both hands and all of my fingers. So you can see it sees my fingers. It sees my fingertips. It sees where the center of my palm is. Um, it detects where my thumb is. Um, and I can, I, can, I can see where I'm going to pick things up. And, and that fine grain motor detection is very exciting. Um, in addition to that, there's some gestures, some basic gestures that can be recognized. So I can put my hands in, I can swipe one direction, I can swipe the other direction, and you can see it's detected with the arrow, right, that that was a swipe motion. So 
if I had a playlist or a page in a book and I wanted to turn to the next page or turn to the next photo, I could just do that very simply, right? And it'd be very easy for an application developer to put that in their, uh, their application. In addition, this other window here is looking at my face and it's detecting with landmark detection where my eyes are, where my mouth is, uh, and it has capabilities to understand things like blink, smile. Um, there are even a couple of things in there around gesture, uh, sorry, uh, gender recognition and age group ranging. Um, so you could use that for different types of applications like for youth versus adult versus senior citizen. Um, and if you're blinking or you're smiling, you're happy or you're you know, not happy, that sort of thing. Could this technology be used for identification checking as well? Uh, at some point in time, it could be. There's a lot of uh, security measures that need to be put in place to make sure that you're actually authenticating and using the technology appropriately. Um, but technology like this that where you can detect the depth of your face as, not, as, as you know, a unique person uh, in combination with, say, a voice uh, fingerprint in addition to potentially a gesture that's unique to, what, to you could be a combination of a very strong way to uh, secure or access right, technology that, that you may have on your, on your uh, computer, yes. So there are um, other technologies in the market today that do more simple forms of recognition than face login as an example, um, but there are more secure mechanisms that could be implemented with this technology. So tell us a little bit about this third screen. The first screen you said captures facial features. The second screen really is capturing motion. What is this third screen here, the blob viewer? Yeah, this is another part of our SDK that is essentially helping with segmentation uh, based upon the depth of the object in front of it. So the things in black that you see are, are, are foreground segmentation versus what's in the background. So my hand now shows up as like the foreground object here. Take it away, now my head is the foreground object. If I go back far enough, it'll all be blended as the one, you know, one color, it'll all be white. So it helps with, as I described, for video conferencing or um, other scenarios where you may want to replace a background image, this would be a very easy way for a developer to take this data and say everything that's not in this black area, right, I want to replace with a video footage, right, of being on the moon or being at the beach or something uh, very interesting like that. So uh, when we announced the Perceptual Computing SDK, we also announced the camera that comes with this as a developer kit. Uh, we're working with Creative, who is uh, actually producing this camera. Uh, the developer kit, which will come in a box much like this, will be available for developers in about a month. Um, and we've got everything, all the information. People can sign up to be notified when it's available on our website. But here you can see it's attached very simply to the, uh, the lid of this Ultrabook. Um, it has a high resolution uh, camera for video conferencing, the depth camera, the array microphone, um, uh, a really great device. Uh, we've, a we've been able to reduce the size of this by working with them uh, to get it to fit on a, you know, what would be like a normal webcam on here, uh, as well as reduce the cost. So for developers, when this becomes available, it'll be $149. So very affordable for developers to get in, get the kit, start experimenting and uh, developing applications uh, right away. Thank you, Craig, for walking us through the Perceptual Computing SDK. Any uh, parting shots here for our uh, audience on Go Parallel? Well, thanks for having me, and I really appreciate it. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention is all the information is available on our website, uh, intel.com slash software slash perceptual. Sign up for uh, notification for the camera, as well as when the SDK itself will become available. And um, that's where developers can find out about this million dollar developer challenge uh, and get access to all the tools and start running with it. All right, thank you again. Thanks. This is being detected, we have four faces being detected right now. The four faces of perceptual computing. <laughs>